So you want to send your cards into PSA for the first time, but you're not exactly sure what steps to take to get you there. I'm making this video to hopefully make that first time process as easy as possible for you. I get this question quite a few times, so I figured I'd make a video on it and hopefully be able to walk you through because it does seem overwhelming at first, especially if it's your first time sending in. So if you have any other comments, questions, anything like that, feel free to leave them and I will get to you as soon as possible. Other than that, guys, let's get into it and I'll catch you guys in the next clip. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is pick the cards that you wanna send in for grading, which honestly, sometimes is the hardest part of this whole process, especially if you have dozens of cards that you wanna send in, but don't wanna drop all that money all at once um, because it does add up fast the more cards you send in. So if you only wanna send in a couple, this part might be the hardest part of the whole thing. So I'm gonna use an example card that I have here that I plan on sending in for grading in the future. It's this holographic Pikachu from a 2002 Black Star promo from the E-Series. And uh, I do recommend getting your uh, cards cleaned ahead of time. They do make card cleaning products and all that stuff that can safely clean your cards because I cannot confirm or deny that PSA cleans your cards before they grade them. I have heard that they don't. So it's better to be safe and get them clean. Get rid of your fingerprints, any kind of surface dust or anything like that that you might have on the card, uh, which will hinder the grade of the surfacing. Um, but other than that, all you're gonna get is a penny sleeve. After it's all said and done, you're gonna slide this right in here. Um, these are super inexpensive. Hence the name penny sleeve. They really normally don't cost more than a penny. And then what you're gonna wanna do is find some tabs. I like to use these tabs. I got these from my local Walmart. And all you're gonna do is peel off one of these tabs, stick it to the back of that penny sleeve just like that, right there on the back. And what that does is it gives it kind of a tab to make it easier to pull out of the semi-rigid sleeve. I know a lot of people use top loaders. Um, I don't know what the process is on that, but I know they prefer these semi-rigid sleeves. So if you can get these, these are not super expensive either. You can pick up a pack of 50 for like $6 is what I think I got these for. And what you're gonna do is slide this down in here, just like that. And that's pretty much how you package your card for when you send it in. And if you have multiple cards, obviously just repeat that process for all of them. And what this does is it just makes it a little easier for the grader to pull the card out and all that stuff makes it a little easier and then they're good to go. But other than that, that's all it takes. That's how you uh, package the cards. And then next step, we're gonna jump into the PSA where you have to actually submit the cards and do all the online paperwork technically, which is sometimes the part that people get confused on. So let's jump into the next clip guys, and I will catch you over on PSA. All right, so we're over here on PSA's homepage. The easiest way to get to the website is psacard.com. I will throw it on the screen for you guys right now. That way you can just see it. They have a bunch of stuff that you can learn about on here. Lots of categories, things like that. Anything you're interested in learning, feel free to check out the website and learn about all the things that they do. We are focused on sending in cards for grading right now, so that's what we're gonna go to. You can go right here to PSA Services Trading Card Grading, and this will teach you more about the processes and services that they have available for it. As you can see, they have grading, crossovers, reviews, reholders, things like that. If you wanna learn more about these other services they provide, just go right here, click Learn More, and it'll tell you all about it. We are focused on grading today though, and sending in our cards for grading, so we're just gonna focus on that and not worry about that other stuff right now. If you scroll down a little further, you will see the grading prices and the different tiers and services they provide based on what kind of cards you're sending in. As you can see, Collector's Club Exclusives Value Bulk is $19 a card, but that is only if you send in, I believe, 20 or more cards for grading. So if you do plan on sending in a lot of cards per year, you only have to send in more than 15 to cover the $100 collector's club exclusive fee which like i said is $99 a year so if you're sending in more than 15 in a year i do recommend it it definitely saves you a little bit of money in the long run but if you're planning on not sending in multiple cards a year all the time you can just stick to the value option which is $25 a card for cards that have a declared value of $499 or less so we are safe to use that for this pikachu we're using as an example because this card does not sell for more than $499 after it's graded and this is the part people get confused on when it asks for the declared value of the card, it is not the raw version of the card. So we're not looking at this Pikachu specifically and saying, oh, this is a $20 Pikachu. You do not put $20 in that declared value section. It's asking what the value of the card is after it's graded, which is kind of weird because you don't know what your grade is gonna be. You kind of have to guess. And you could go to eBay, recently solds. I use that a lot if I can't find the price on PSA's website and you can just look at the recently solds on eBay. So if you think your card's gonna be less than $499 after it's graded, this is definitely not a bad option. It's the cheapest way to go. 
as far as not having membership or anything like that. The estimated turnaround time is about 65 days, which is just a little over two months. If you're a little impatient, you can opt to spend 15 more dollars and go to the value plus right here for $40 a card. Same thing though, declared value of 499 or less. And the turnaround time is literally a third of the time. It's 20 days compared to 65. But if you're patient and you're not in a rush to get them back right away within 20 days, just stick to the $25 value. You're saving yourself $15, which you can now use towards the next card you wanna get graded. And as you can see, the different tiers, they go up $75 a card. That's good for cards that are $1,500 or less. The turnaround time is only 10 days on that. So you could send a card in like this Pikachu for $75 and get it back in 10 days. I don't recommend that though, because this graded Pikachu probably is barely gonna break that threshold of breaking even. If anything, you might even lose money if you plan on selling your graded cards later on. So that is something to keep in mind. It's best to use the highest value you can in these tiers and just go off those. So what you're gonna do is now that we're going through the pricing and all that stuff, I will walk you through the submission of it. All you do is go right up here to the green submit button. You click that. I'm already signed in. It probably will ask you to sign in or create an account if you go to this part. So all you have to do is create an account. It's free. You don't have to worry about being charged anything unless you wanna become a member, which you don't have to do. And we're gonna start a new submission. As you guys can see, I do have a incomplete submissions, which I will show you guys later on to finish the example I'm trying to show you here. But what you're gonna do is click start new submission. It's gonna bring you to the item type you're trying to get graded. They have multiple things you can grade, regular or small sized cards. They have super sized cards, T3 cards, jumbo cards. It, the list goes on. They even do sealed packs. They even do Funko Pops, which is uh, kind of neat. So we're gonna stick to the regular cards, which is just, what we're sending in, which is what this Pikachu is. It's just a regular card. You're gonna hit next after you select regular. It's gonna ask you the submission type, which we talked about a little bit ago, how they have gradings, reviews, crossovers, reholders, and uh, you just click grading. And it's gonna pop out this little side window. If you have autographed cards, they do do autographed cards and things like that, which are super cool. We are obviously just focusing on just your straightforward Pokemon card. So you just click no autograph authentication, go to next. It's gonna now bring you to the service level you want. As you can see, my list here is gonna be a little different because I am a PSA Collectors Club member, which like I said, costs $99 a year. And you do get reduced pricing. Uh, right now they're running a sale. So instead of $19 per card, it's $15 a card for members. And you only have to send in 10 cards instead of 20. So it's kind of a thing they have going on. It probably will be over by the time I post this video. So we're not gonna focus on that right now. What you're gonna look at is the $25 pricings. What you're gonna wanna do is click 1980 to present for the value, because obviously Pokemon was not around before the 1980s. So 1980 to present, that's all you gotta do. Click that, go right to next, and it's gonna ask you for the item entry, which is where things get a little tricky for people. You're gonna look up your card right here in the description. Look at the year your card was uh, released. So for this Pikachu, it's a 2003. I like to type in Pokemon so it narrows it down a little more. You can type in um, Pikachu. 012 is the number on my card. Actually, you can see right here, right there. 2003 Pokemon Black Star Promo 012 Pikachu Hollow. That's the card we're looking for. You click on that. It's gonna replace the title of what you typed. That way it's nice and uh, easy to read. Here's where the declared value came in that I talked about earlier. This card, like I said, give or take $20. I don't know the price on it, so don't quote me on it. You do not type $20 there you are gonna type in the declared value of what it would be after it's graded. So say a PSA 10 sells for $100, you're gonna type $100 there instead. And that is what the declared value means as far as that goes. And then once you hit save, it's gonna pop the card down right here under description. And then you'll see your declared value and everything like that too. And what it does is it clears this box out now. So if you have multiple cards you're trying to send in, you can easily just type in the next card, do multiple cards, anything like that and uh, you can just keep going. So over here, your service level fee changes. Now we have one item in there for $25, $25. And then what you're gonna want to do is hit next. You can also put in comments or requests in there if you if you want to, but um, you don't have to. All you have to do is hit next and it's gonna bring you to the shipping and billing. And what you're gonna want to do is if you want to ship right back to you, once they're done, you just click ship back to me. And what it's gonna do is show you what the insured shipping is, which is a little pricier. So you are spending $44 on one card to get graded technically, but it is insured and everything like that. That way, if it ever gets lost in the mail, because you know that can happen sometimes. 
you're safe from worrying about that. It's going to suck either way, but at least you're insured, and that is a plus. So here, if you have any vouchers or anything like that, you enter them now. Um, you put your card on file. For me, I'm just going to throw on an American Express. I'm not going to fill out the information right now, but you'll see a notice here, which is good to know. Credit cards will not be charged until the order is received and has completed processing at PSA. So you're not going to pay this number right here up front. You're gonna pay it once they finish your processing of your graded cards, which like I said, we're doing value, which is 65 days. So probably in about two months, you'll get charged for that when they're getting ready to send it back to you. So anything like that, you don't have to worry about. It's not gonna come out of your account right that minute. It'll be two months later. So just make sure you remember that as well, because last time I sent cards in for grading, I totally forgot I even did that and it kind of caught me off guard. But either way, shipping and billing is done. Next, you'll enter your address and everything like that. I'll, you can scroll down. I'm not going to because my address is already in there. And um, you'll scroll down, enter your address, hit next again, and it's gonna take you to the confirmation. So what I'm gonna do is I already have cards that I want to send in for grading. As you can see, we're sending in 38 cards for $15 a piece for $570. Because like I said, they're running a sale right now for premium club members. And what we do is send in a bunch of cards save a little bit of money. These are not all of my cards. What we do on my channel with our community on Discord and over on Twitch is people will send me their cards to, for me to send in for grading for them. That way they don't have to deal with the headache of doing all of it. So I ship it all out for us. And then when they come back, we re reveal them live on stream, see what grades everybody got. It's a fun time, things like that. So I'm only sending in four cards. I am sending in Ancient Origins, Full Art Primal Kyogre, the Platinum Rising Rivals uh, Alakazam, Black Star promo e, uh, XY Pikachu from the red and blue collection. And then I'm sending in the Vivid Voltage Rainbow Rare Pikachu V Max. If you want to stick around to the end of the video, I am going to show all of the cards right here on screen, the 38 of them. So if you want to see what we're sending in for grading, stick around to the end of the video and check it out. So, anyways, what we're going to do is go next. And then it's going to bring up the shipping and billing for us. This will show us exactly what we're going to be paying. So for insured shipping for all of these cards, it's only going to cost $43.25. And with multiple people sending in, that cuts down that price a lot for the return shipping, which definitely helps. So like we have seven people, I believe, that are sending in for cards. It's seven or eight. So just say we have seven. Basically, the shipping for everybody to get them back with insured shipping is only going to be $6 a person, which definitely helps. And other than that, I'm going to pause the video here, enter all of my information, and then I will come back with the confirmation, the submit, and then the process after that. So I will catch you guys in the next clip. So just a quick heads up, I forgot to mention this before, and uh, obviously I wanted to bring it up that way it doesn't catch anybody off guard. You do have to have a phone number on your account. As you can see, it says, please add a phone number to your account. Just needed to drop that in there for you guys. See you guys in a couple seconds. All right, so here we go. We are on step number six, which is confirmation. What you're gonna see here is right above this, it's gonna show your address, card information, all that stuff. So I scrolled down just a little bit so that's not on the screen. And then once you scroll down a little more, you're gonna see that your submission summary over here, your totals and everything like that, and then the cards that you're sending in. And what you're gonna wanna do is scroll down to the bottom, make sure you read the terms and procedures and everything like that. And then um, once you get through all that, you can hit, I have read, PSA grading terms and conditions set forth. Check mark that box. And like I said, it's gonna leave another note for you too that says your credit card will not be charged until the order is received and processed by PSA. So you don't have to worry about that coming out right away. So what you're gonna do now is hit next and we'll be moving on to step number seven. All right, guys, you did it. After step number six, when you hit next, this page will come up. It's gonna say your submission form has been successfully completed. So if this is your first time sending in, congratulations, you're almost there. There are a couple other steps we still have to take, so stay tuned. There are things like if you need to ship multiple submissions in the same package, you can do that. So say you have multiple submissions you wanna put in, but you forgot to add a card or two or something like that. You can do that, but the only thing with that is when they ship them back, I believe they will come back in separate packages and that's gonna charge you double for shipping because they're gonna send them in two different packages. So the one thing I recommend is 100% making sure you can squeeze all of your cards into one submission without forgetting one. If you forget one, you can either just wait till the next time you wanna grade cards or you can just send it as the one in the same package you're sending them. But like I said, they will send them back 
in two different packages, causing you to pay two different shipping costs. So that's kind of a bummer if you do that. Anyways, what we're gonna do is go down. It's gonna show you the next steps, which is nice. The arranging and preparing of the cards, I already showed you in the beginning of the video. It says to uh, ship your cards safely and securely in protective pouches. Semi-rigid plastic pouches like the Card Saver brand are recommended. Please do not submit unprotected cards, which is cards without protection, or cards in top loaders, screw down holders, or hard acrylic snap cases. So right here, it straight up says, do not send them in top loaders. I don't know what happens if people do send them in top loaders, but just play it safe. I'm always gonna make sure that I do what they recommend. I'm not gonna just say, oh, I'll just do top loaders because I don't know what will happen. I don't know if there's extra charges. I don't know because I'm just gonna stick to the recommended tips that they give you. So I think you should too. Just get the semi-rigid plastic pouches, play it safe. That way you don't have to ever worry about anything because you're doing it right by the book. For Funko Pops, don't worry about that unless you're looking to send those in, then you can read that. It says, do not place labels, stickers, or writing outside of each card saver. And also another important thing here highlighted in black, put the collectibles in the order they appear on your submission form this is important because if you don't put the cards in the order that the submission sheet that you print out later on says like when you submitted your cards if they're not in the same order they are going to charge you five percent of a service charge on your order and it's going to take a longer processing time so that 65 days that you're waiting for that card is going to go up to who, who knows how many days longer i don't know but just make sure when your submission form is being filled out and you're putting your cards ready for packaging that they are in the same order as the submission form or you will get charged extra. So when you package them up, it says, we suggest placing all of your items between two larger pieces of cardboard and securing the bundle with rubber bands. I am gonna show you guys how I package the uh, order that I'm gonna be shipping out. So if you wanna stay till the end, you can see how I ship up, pack up, I should say, the box and ship it out that way because you're gonna need labels and everything like that as well. So just make sure you use a lot of bubble wrap things like that make sure your cards are safe and like i said you can get insurance when you ship it out because you're already paying the insurance for it to come back if you want i recommend it as well especially if you're sending out a lot of stuff like our order right now is declared value at like 4200 dollars. we do not want to lose a declared value of 4200 dollars. so we're going to pay the extra insurance when we ship it out as well because you never know anything can happen and that would definitely be a bummer if you don't have insurance and it gets lost misplaced or anything like that so other than that you're going to scroll down you will go down to print. You need to print this label right here. You will see this label. I already printed mine out. Once you hit print label, it'll just give you the option to print it on your printer. Print that out because you will need that for later. And also you need to print out all of the submission forms, include PSA copy one, PSA copy two with your shipment. They will have a customer copy for you as well when you print it out. If you need to combine, obviously there's different options for combining, but we are using the sample of sending in one card on one submission form and you don't need to worry about that unless you have to send in multiple uh, submissions. If you're sending in, like for us, we're sending in 38 cards, but it's considered one submission because it's all on the same submission page, if that makes sense. So say you forget a card, that's when things get a little hairy. Anyways, so you're done with that. Now what you're gonna go down to is ship. It's gonna say, uh, do not obscure the barcode with packing tape. We recommend using the carrier option shown below regardless of choice. We strongly encourage you properly ensure your shipment. So even right here, they're telling you, they recommend you putting insurance on your shipment to PSA just to cover all the bases. If you're using United States Postal Service, here's the address you'll be shipping to. And if you're using FedEx, you can ship to this address here. And then what you're gonna see is you're gonna see your print submission forms right there. All you do is click that, print all of those out and you are ready to go. So the next steps we're gonna jump into are gonna be packing it up, doing the submission forms, making sure everything's put in place and go from there. So I will catch you guys in the next clip. Stick around if you wanna see how to package up the orders the way we do, and uh, we'll see you over there. All right, we're finally down to the home stretch of things. We're gonna be packing up this order for PSA and shipping it out. So I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to do that, or at least how I like to do it. I don't know if there's any right or wrong way to do it, but just make sure your cards are safe. That's pretty much what it comes down to. So what you're gonna wanna do first is grab two pieces of cardboard of the same size. All I did was cut off a flap of one of my cardboard boxes laying around that I didn't need and cut two, two pieces of the same size. And what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna slap your cards in there just like this. Pretty much make a sandwich out of the cardboard with your cards. That way they're stuck right in between, just like that. And you're gonna take your rubber bands. Make sure your rubber bands aren't super tight. Make sure they're tight enough to make sure they hold in place, but you don't wanna over tighten them just to be safe. So. You're gonna take the rubber bands, do that. 
make sure you go in every direction that way everything just stays nice and safe and this will help prevent any corners or anything of the cards getting bent because they will be stuck right in between these two pieces of cardboard just like that and then on to the next step you're going to find a box or the package you need i like to use these boxes these are actually from walmart they're like 68 cents a six by six by six so for an order like this i feel like this is perfect because we are going to be layering this thing with bubble wrap inside and out and uh make sure you cut we're going to bubble wrap around this a few times we're going to put bubble wrap on the inside for the outside layers and just make sure there's no wiggle room for the cards to be moving around and bouncing around on their way there so now we're going to jump into bubble wrapping all right so you're just going to take your little oreo sandwich ice cream sandwich looking thing put it in some bubble wrap just like this grab yourself some clear packing tape or any kind of packing tape that you like to use there really is no right or wrong answer here just make sure it's something that will hold it in place with the bubble wrap just like this and what we like to do is make sure the flaps and everything are covered all right and like i say you can do multiple layers which i probably will do but for the sake of the video i'm just going to move on to the next part which like i said what i like to do is i like to stick bubble wrap in here just like this on the bottom that way it gives it just that little extra layer of protection there and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to stick these cards straight up and down and then what you can do is you can stuff paper and everything else on the inside we'll put the top layer of bubble wrap on now and then what i will do is fill in the extra gaps with packing paper which is what i'm going to do right now all right so for packing paper you don't have to use exact pa packing paper like this you can use newspaper printing paper anything you can find that will help you fill in the gaps of your box so what we're gonna do i just get a lot of this stuff for free because of my dog's food from uh, chewy so i like to save it and it definitely comes in handy so we're just gonna pack that on one side make sure we have enough rip that in half and bam so now we just gotta rip off a little bit more for the other side and we should be good to go so perfect so as you can see this thing is not going to move around at all in there no matter which way i tip it anything like that and then once we get the top on as you can see you don't hear any movement at all inside this box which is what you're looking for so anyways i'm not going to tape this box up quite yet because there's a few other things i need to do before i send these things off so up next what you're going to want to do is you need your label from earlier that you printed so this label here is the one you printed from earlier from the submission page all you do is cut that off and what you're going to do is tape it to the top out of the way so that it's not covered by a shipping label or anything like that you're going to throw a little bit of clear tape over top of it do not use anything that obstructs the barcode they need to be able to scan that once it arrives so what you're going to do is use a little bit of clear tape put it right over top of there and you'll be good to go i recommend putting this on last because when you get the labels and everything you want to make sure that it's not going to be obstructed i like to print my labels from home which is what I will be doing. And then as you have this, before you finally seal the box, you are gonna wanna put the paperwork in there that you printed off. So you, right here you have the PSA, copy number one. You're gonna put all of this together in there. You can just fold that up nice and neat like this. And make sure you find a space for this to go inside the box as well. And you're also gonna wanna send the PSA copy number two. So there's gonna be two copies. You need to send both of those in. Quick interruption, just so you guys know, when you're doing the PSA copy number one and the PSA copy number two, make sure you fill this little section out right here. It's gonna ask you how many orders are in this package. Obviously, we're just shipping one order with 38 cards. So this section here is asking how many total number of collectibles are in the box. So if you have combined orders, this is where you, those numbers might change a little bit. But for us, we're only sending one order. 38 cards so make sure you do that on both of your copies before you put them in the box and seal it up either way back to the video guys together i don't know if they recommend you folding them separately but i like to just so they're back to back just like this put number one on the front number two in the back and then you're just going to slide this in there with your cards that way they have all the information on the cards that you're sending in right off the right off the rip and then you're good to go there like I say, you do have a customer copy. You do not send this one. It will say customer copy right here on the top. So that one is for you. 
And then what we like to do is throw a little bit more bubble wrap on the top. You can never have too much bubble wrap, you know, just play it safe. Nothing wrong with overusing. And then there you go. That's when you're able to seal it up. And like I said, the label you cut out earlier goes on the outside of the box. Just cover it with some clear tape and then you're good to go. You can take it to the post office get to ship it out. Or like I say, you can do it from home. I like to print mine online. You just have to buy a scale. That way you can make sure you weigh it and uh, put the size of the box in the dimensions and then find the pricing of what it's going to cost to ship it. So something like this is typically going to run you about $10 or so, give or take. And other than that, you guys are ready to go. So I hope this video helped. I hope you guys have a great time sending in your cards. I hope you guys all get tens. And if you have any other questions or comments, feel free to leave them below and I will get to you as soon as possible. Thank you guys so much. Let's move on to that bonus clip I promised you. Okay, if you stayed till the end of the video, you guys are gonna see the bonus clip I talked about earlier of the cards we are gonna be sending in for grading. We have 39 total, 38 in the first submission, and we are sending in an autographed card. So we are gonna have to do a separate submission for that. But anyways, check them out. We have this autographed Pikachu. Ash's Pikachu from the voice actor of Ash, which is definitely super cool. And then here's the 38 other cards that we are sending in. We've got a flesh and blood card here, some Pokemon Sylveon V, Charizard V Max, we got the Lugia V, Blastoise, another flesh and blood card, Crown of Providence. And then here's the cards I'm sending in. We got the Primal Kyogre, the Alakazam, Pikachu EX, my brother's card, the Reshiram and Charizard GX, my Pikachu V Max, and then we have Joe Bin's cards here with the Pikachu VMAX and the Shadowless Gyarados. Coming in next is Jocelyn's cards with the Light Arcanine, Ninetales, Dark Charizard, Charizard VMAX, Leafeon V, Galarian Maltrace, Japanese Vaporeon from Eevee Heroes, Pikachu. We got Copperjaw VMAX. These ones here are from Hemi Burnout. We got Espeon GX, Gyarados GX, a Black Star promo Mew, Umbreon from Celebrations, Charmander promo, Kufon, Baby Shiny, we got the Rainbow Rare Giratina V-Star, a Japanese Charizard V-Star. Then we have a first edition Jungle Pikachu. We got the base set Pikachu, a first edition Lickitung from Jungle. Then we have a base set two Venusaur, base set two Blastoise, base set two Charizard, and we have a base set Charizard. So super cool there. And then we have Opeg Otter coming in with a holographic Japanese Lucario. So there you go, there you guys go. Those are the cards we're gonna be sending in for grading this round. If you guys are interested in sending cards in for grading, feel free to join our channel. We're gonna be doing this a couple times this year. It's definitely a fun time, so check it out. And uh, I'll have all the links and stuff for the description for our Discord and Twitch channel. So make sure to check that out. Either way, guys, thanks for watching. You guys are absolutely amazing. Have a great rest of your day, and I will talk to you guys in the next one.